and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you so much for joining me. You're probably here because you watch Boogie Pop Phantom and you're sitting there going, where did this come from? Was it based on something? Is there something I'm not following? Am I missing some context? You probably are. And this is one of the reasons that people get confused about Boogie Pop Phantom. And we'll explain this in a little bit. But Boogie Pop Phantom is not only based on something else. It was meant to come out along with something else. Boogie Pop is... Boogie Pop Phantom is based on a series of novels. The first one was called... Uh, over here, Boogie Pop and Others. Uh, originally in Japan, it was also called Boogie Pop Doesn't Laugh. And Boogie Pop is a psychological thriller slash horror story that takes place over the course of multiple novels that all interweave and are set at different times in this timeline. And they were extremely popular. Um, over two million copies in print. Extremely successful. And this is what's called a light novel, which means it's a short novel. You can see it's pretty large text with some illustrations along with the story. Isn't that neat? I just opened it right to that. That's pretty cool. So yeah, you can see it's, you know, you can read this pretty quickly. Like an early Harry Potter novel. And indeed, this Boogie Pop was, and particularly the first novel, essentially started and kicked off the modern light novel craze in Japan. If you've heard about anime being based on light novels, Boogie Pop was one of the big and arguably the big um, push for that, and one of the reasons for that back in the late 90s. It really kicked off this craze. So, inevitably, there was going to be an anime adaptation of that. I'm sorry, early 90s is when Boogie Pop came out in novel form. And so then, they started working on two things at the same time. There was the anime series, Boogie Pop Phantom, and a live-action movie, which... Uh, is also called, I believe, Boogie Pop and Others, at least translated over here in America. And the live-action movie was meant to tell basically the story of the first novel and some of the backstory of Boogie Pop. Um, what caused a lot of the strange supernatural things in the you know, later storylines. The anime series was about the effects of that. It was about... You know, given this event in the movie, here's the anime series and here's the impacts of that movie. Unfortunately, the movie was delayed. It did not come out the same time as the anime series. So all this context was lost on people who never followed that. Now, obviously, if you're in Japan, you probably have already you know, read that, but some people hadn't. Right? Like, again, like Harry Potter. Harry Potter came out, and a lot of folks had not read Harry Potter. And so, yeah, Boogie Pop Phantom kind of assumes you know this backstory. So if you want to understand what's going on in, in, in Boogie Pop Phantom, it helps to go back to dig into some of these novels. And you'll see some of actually Boogie Pop Phantom in, in this first book. Um, but other things in the story, but especially that movie. So if you can ch check out the Boogie Pop live action mo movie, you'll understand the context. Now, that is a live action sci fi movie made in Japan in the uh, late 90s. Not a huge budget, um, very constrained. I enjoyed it. I think it effectively tells its story, um, but it's not a Marvel film. Just be ready for that. So, uh, then, separately, actually, let's go back for a while. So, who is responsible for all these things? Unusually, uh, Kohei Kodono, who is the writer of the novels, he was very intimately involved in all of these productions. He wrote the screenplay for the movie, and he worked to compose and decide what went into Boogie Pop Phantom, the anime series. He didn't write every single screenplay, if I recall. Um, but he did decide, here's what's in, um, in Boogie Pop Phantom, here's what's in each episode, and then folks went off and, and wrote you know, individual lines of dialogue, adapting from various uh, volumes of the light novel series, and I believe some original stuff as well. So then, 
as things progressed, there was inevitably a manga adaptation. That is also its own uh, work. It is actually an original story. It's not based on any of the novels. It is set actually after the events of Boogie Pop Phantom and the movie and most of the novels. Uh, some years later, it actually uh, tells the story of a student at the Shinyo Academy where all this goes on, who then, who has, has since graduated and come to work at that academy later on. And Boogie Pop shows up. Spoiler! And that's called Boogie Pop Duel. And Boogie Pop Duel is its own storyline. It's only a few volumes. Um, you don't need to read any of it to understand what's going on, but it is very much a Boogie Pop story. It's a little lighter in tone, still weird psychological thriller things going on, but it feels a little bit more fun than your traditional Boogie Pop story. Again, a little lighter in tone. <clears throat> now, how much of this is available in English? That's a whole nother story, and we'll, we'll explain. Um, I believe it's Seven Seas Entertainment decided to bring out, let me see if that's true here, um, Seven Seas decided to license, uh, yeah, Seven Seas decided to license Boogie Pop. Actually, let's, let's rewind a little bit further. Boogie Pop Phantom was released over here under what's now Nozomi Entertainment, Right Stuff. Right Stuff Anime. Right Stuff is run by a bunch of anime fans who have contacts in the anime industry, but they fundamentally, they sell, you know, anime DVDs and box sets and manga and so forth in America. They've been doing it for decades. This is one of the early anime sellers in America and who survived. And as Right Stuff you know, continued selling stuff, they kept seeing anime that was released in Japan that never made it over here in America. They really wanted to see licensed and they really wanted people to watch. So I think their first thing was Irresponsible Captain Tyler? That or something else. They were like, it wouldn't come over, wouldn't come over. Finally they were like, fine, we're just going to license this. We're just going to license it and hire voice actors and just get it done. And so they licensed it, brought it over, and it was very well received. And they uh, progressed uh, from this, from that, to a couple of other things. And Boogie Pop Phantom was one of their releases. So this was an anime series that nobody wanted to touch over in the West. It was too weird. It was too distinctive. It was too hard for people to follow. Nobody was, was going to do it. But Right Stuff was like, dang it, people deserve to see Boogie Pop Phantom. And that got enough attention that Seven Seas decided some years later to commit to the Boogie Pop franchise. And so they started translating and bringing over the Boogie Pop novels. Now, there are well over a dozen Boogie Pop novels. This is a not inconsiderable project. And so they released, I think, four or five Boogie Pop novels in America. And they really went all out. I mean, not only do you get um, color pages with original illustrations and artwork from the original stories. That's not cheap. As later Boogie Pop stories came on, they published in the back of these books explanations of the story so far. So you could pick up a later novel and understand where it fit into the larger thing. They had whole timelines in the, in the beginning and end of these books so you would know how everything fit together and um, you know, this novel comes before that novel. They really did it, did it well, and nobody bought them. Just sales were low. They could not get people to 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 buy these. And so, unfortunately, after releasing a bunch of them, they finally announced, "I'm sorry, we cannot afford." to keep making these. They're just, we're in the red on every single one. Uh, I don't know every single one, but you know, the last several of them just were not paying for themselves. So finally, after releasing all of Boogie Pop Duel, I believe at least up to that point, which was I think two or three volumes, I think two volumes, um, and then several of Boogie Pop Phantom novels, they just stopped. Uh, fortunately, they did translate Boogie Pop and Dawn, which was um, a, a big prequel story, which explains a lot of the backstory of the whole kind of universe, uh, which has come out more recently. It's like, okay, let's at least get that out so folks know, know it's what happened. But you're not going to get all of, Har all of Boogie Pop in English unless you go and find people, you know, online who are, who've tracked down and translated various parts of Boogie Pop. Just be aware. 
but you do get a lot. That's the nice thing. The movie is available um, with you know a decent translation. You can find the live action movie. You can find Boogie Pop Phantom, several novels, and Boogie Pop Duel. And so that's all out there. Um, so be aware of that. Um, and that's sort of the basic scale of the Boogie Pop franchise. Everything is is out there. And I would say if you watch Boogie Pop Phantom, and these videos will help to explain some of the story, um, but if you want to know what's going on, watch the live action movie. That is really the pairing for Boogie Pop Phantom that will explain the, the fundamentals of the story. Lots more videos like this coming along on Boogie Pop Phantom. I will explain a lot more about what's going on in this show, but hopefully this is helpful. Thanks for watching.